So just to show you what we're dealing with, this is a mass by ultrasound. And it's a mass that has some cystic areas, you can see here, and some solid areas. And if you turn on the color flow, Doppler, you can see blood flow within these solid areas. That's a lot of blood flow, very disorganized. Tumors have a lot of disorganized angiogenesis and a lot of blood flow. This is ugly. This is an ovarian cancer. And also, when it's determined that it's not ovarian cancer, uh, there are specific diagnoses that can be made and can be made accurately. Is it a dermoid? Is it a hydrosalpinx? Is it a, an endometrioma? These are also quite specifically made by ultrasound, by looking at ultrasound. And this shows the, that you can actually use ultrasound to make a very specific and accurate diagnosis. Now this is an example of how we use ultrasound to make a specific diagnosis. This is a big mass. Cystic mass has these cystic areas, as you can see. It doesn't have so much uh, solid areas as our last one did, but it, you know, it's a very nondescript mass. But with 3D ultrasound and the inverse mode of 3D ultrasound, which is very technical, but you can take a look at this in a three-dimensional space and find that it's actually tubular. And it's a hydrosalpinx, it's a tube. So we have a lot of technology at our fingertips now within the ultrasound machine that we didn't have 10 years ago that enables us to do this kind of work. Now going on to endometriosis, this is a typical endometrioma. Um, it, it's a cyst and it has this ground glass appearance. It's often associated with a hydrosalpinx because it uh, um, makes for a lot of adhesions and stickiness in the pelvis. But I think that what ultrasound has gotten very good at recently uh, because everybody knows that ultrasound is good at seeing cysts, but what ultrasound is good at seeing recently is the implants of endometriosis in the bowel wall. This is a loop of bowel here. This is the lumen of the loop of bowel. This is the normal wall on this side, and that wall is all nodular and thickened. You can see it here. These are implants of endometriosis. These are very, very p uh, painful and tender, and there are a lot of, there are thousands and thousands of women that have this tenderness back there in the cul-de-sac, in the back. And uh, that is associated with the rectosigmoid endometriosis, which is extremely common. And it was always MR that was touted as the, the way to go. And now there's data very strongly suggesting that ultrasound is very, very good, if not better than MR, uh, at least as good um, in, in accurately detecting uh, rectosigmoid endometriosis. And what you do with ultrasound is you do a tenderness-guided ultrasound. So you've got the probe, the vaginal probe, and you can poke a little bit. And the patient will say, oh yeah, no, that's where it hurts, and that's where you look. Uh, and so we can actually do an exam at the same time as we do the imaging to guide us to the place that actually hurts. And that's one of the reasons why ultrasound has become so accurate, uh, because we're doing an exam at the same time which is an added benefit from actually uh, doing the ultrasound exam ourselves.